What's up you guys, Tommy Shaw here and today what I'll be doing is talking about my outlook on crude oil for 2020-21. Okay, the actual situation right now is that we have a supply of around 83 million barrels per day but before the crisis we had 92 million barrels per day approximately, okay. We had a cut of 10% worldwide and the demand has been cut by one third. So the demand was almost the same as the supply, but now we have a demand of about 60 million barrels per day. So if we look at the supply and demand chart, what we'll notice is that all this is having a negative price effect on crude oil. It went from $60 to around $25. Now, we still have an excess of 23 million barrels per day and this has a very hard down pressure on prices. If this continues, if this situation continues, demand doesn't increase or supply doesn't get cut, we should expect in the next few months prices to either decline or stay stable. As we get closer to the end of these contracts, we might see these prices decrease that drastically just like it happened not too long ago when we saw negative price for oil. These contracts, people want to get rid of them. There's nowhere to store it and people are paying essentially another person to take that contract. So you're being paid $40 to $25 to take on that, crack, uh, that, that contract. Now, reserves are practically full around the world. So if we have an excess 23 million barrels a day and the reserves are full, that puts an enormous pressure on prices. If we continue, we should expect the price to decline or maybe I would expect them to decline because we're already, we already have too much crude oil and there's nowhere to store it. Okay. The only way for prices to increase, the only way this could change around we would have to have a paradigm shift. We would have to have something that either they cut production more than demand. This will have an, a reverse effect. Until we see that in the market, there's no way that the price of oil could increase. Now, unless the market sees something that we don't see, maybe it's going to price it. If somebody knows that a war is about to break out or anything, the market is going to price it in. The market can practically see in the future what we can't see. It has information that we, 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 not everybody has access to. So let's look at potential uh, risks or tensions around the world. Iran and the USA, there's a, there's a lot of tension, especially when crude oil gets lower. There's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of tensions between Iran and the USA. When we look at China with the trade war and everything that's going on right now, you, uh, China is a rising power and at, at one point these two powers are going to challenge themselves. That's what I believe and also Ray Dalio thinks the same thing. When we're looking at China and Australia, there's a lot of rumors, there's a lot of tension between those two countries right now, Russia and USA. And if we look at this, these three powers could combine themselves together and maybe try to say, hey, we had about enough of your, you guys' power and we want to take over because they have their real production. Here, we are more of consumers, so their, their rising power is increasing, okay? So, one thing you need to remember, when you're trying to speculate in these markets and trying to understand what's going on, markets can stay irrational longer than you can remain solvent. Always remember that because I'm, I'm bullish on crude oil. I'm bullish on crude oil stocks even though they have massive debt because what I see is that the market is very pessimistic and I say, okay, the, the markets are undervalued. You can get more value than what they're worth. So I'm saying to myself, okay, this is very cheap right now. But I've been saying that for two years and the markets have been going down even more because I was expecting something to happen that these markets would turn around. I wasn't expecting a virus to take the world and have this impact, okay? So always remember that. Markets can stay irrational longer than you can remain solvent. I am a contrarian. I believe markets are too pessimistic. So 
If you have any comments, you want to post them down below, you agree with the information I'm saying. Of course, I did approximately, I didn't go take the exact numbers, I only did the mental calculations. So, uh, if you want to put them down, the real numbers, so people can read them and it will be helping everybody in on this channel. So, if you like this kind of information, like, subscribe, and I'll be seeing you on the next video.